Hey guys, Union Pacific Omaha here. Now before we get into episode 3 of Engines of Union Pacific, the AC44CWCTE, I gotta give credit to Amtrak Guy365 who made Engines of Amtrak. Make sure you go check out his channel and other great content. Now let's get started. The AC4400CW is similar to the C44-9W, but it uses AC traction motors instead of DC. Railroads were looking to change to AC current because of the greater adhesion, greater reliability, less maintenance, and less friction. These locos were built from 1993 through 2004 as a better version of the Dash 9 series. The AC stands for AC traction, the 4400 stands for 4400 horsepower, the C stands for the C three axle truck design, and the W stands for the wide cab. Like many other GE locos, they have 4400 horsepower powered by a 7FDL16 prime mover with a tractive effort of 180,000 pounds and 136,000 pounds at 14 miles per hour. They can hold 5,000 gallons of fuel. They stand at a height of 15 feet 6 inches and a length of 30, 73 feet 2 inches and a width of 10 feet 3 inches. UP44 CWCTEs are numbered from 5554 to 6080. The standard AC44 CWs are numbered from 6140 through 7300 with some AC 6000s within the 71 through 7300 class. Even though most of those were changed to AC 4460s, basically an AC 44 CW on an AC 6000 body. Those are now being rebuilt into AC 44 C6Ms, but UP calls them C44 ACMs. These locos almost always carry a horn from the Nathan K3 family, but more commonly a K3 LA. Here are some examples. Now mechanically there are no differences between the CWCTE and the CW. What is different is the electronics. The Loco uses CTE software which helps the Locos perform better when being used as a DPU. It limits the tractive effort to 110,000 pounds so if it's pushing something light like an empty center beam and notch 8, it won't shove it off the rails in a curve. 110,000 was chosen because that's the amount the C44-9 put out, so that's what they wanted to use because it didn't have problems like that. So CTE isn't all that necessary if you're pushing a loaded coal train, but if you're pushing an empty well car, then it's more effective. Before reading and learning about this, I never thought about how pushing power could be so strong for the cars to handle, because I'm used to seeing DPUs on coal trains, loaded and empty. Well, that's going to wrap up episode 3 of Engines of Union Pacific. I hope you guys really enjoyed learning about this loco as much as I did. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. Thanks again. Union Pacific Omaha, out.